Where to begin? Within the commentary community, there is a lot of infatuation with the characters that orbit, as well as the creators. There's been a lot of interesting characters who have come and gone within the perpetual revolving doors of the community. One of such is a charismatic, crinkly-haired fellow Australian who goes by John Swan. That's coming up today on Abbreviated Internet History. John began his career as a small commentary YouTuber after making a couple of videos making tech parody videos. We could just put a normal number instead of a Roman numeral in the product name. His first altercation with the community was when he covered Just Destiny and was invited into the NCO group chat. Keemstar had been accused of doxing and the NCO group chat was being blamed for facilitating it and not stopping the process. He found himself on After Hours on April 16th, 2019 to explain his side of the story. A common misconception that I think a lot of people have is that I was added to the chat uh, probably weeks before this happened. That's not true. We found public information through social media accounts to find a name, by the way, not an address, not a blood type, a name of, of Just Destiny to prove that he was not Michael Sherman, a.k.a. a sex offender. This would eventually lead to him butting heads with Nicholas Dioria. When I when I look at all what you've said and what I look no what you Tommy are you were one hundred percent complicit in the witch hunt you took part in how it. was I complicit you're telling you you're telling me that nobody believed Keemstar then why was Keemstar not removed from the group right in the beginning when he was making these baseless accusations of course because Keemstar probably would have gotten the docs but at the end of the day once we once we knew this was all about doxing Keem could have got it somewhere else and not dirtied the entire NCO dirty the hands of the people in it so why not just kick him from the very beginning avoid this entire conflict and then I don't have to know what ethnicity Just Destiny is. Eventually, everything would smooth over, and John Swan began collaborating with Josh Pescator, and was the front man of his news channel, and would upload his most successful video at the time, The Rise, Fall, and Resurgence of Minecraft, which featured an upcoming Minecraft creator named Dream, someone who would have a huge effect on John Swan merely a few years later. After that, he would collaborate with The Right Opinion, and transition into being a full-time content creator, where his video on Anisian began to gain traction. But it wasn't until his very next video on Suzy Lou that his channel really began to take off. Ironically enough, commentators like Nicholas Diorio and Tommy C had called for people in the NCO to pay more attention to Suzy Lou, but it went ignored. However, close to a year later when John dropped his video, things really began to pop off and John was actually flagged allegedly by Suzy Lou, and his video was taken down and re-uploaded. John began a bit of back and forth with Susie Lou, and during which Susie would actually have her Patreon removed due to allegedly reacting to copyrighted content. John's reputation within the community began to grow as he showcased a sustainable prowess and skills with a combination of really tremendous editing and a great narrating voice. After John Swan began releasing his Chris Hansen videos, Tommy C delivered a hot take that at the time, nobody really seemed to pay attention to. You see, around this time, Nicholas Diorio and John Swan were making videos on similar subjects and collaborating with each other. Making another video with Nicholas Diorio. And Tommy seemed to notice a pattern with Nick's videos and John's videos. He observed that John had stolen a couple of Nicholas Diorio's jokes. If these people sound like they were born yesterday, that's because they actually were. If it seems like these people were born yesterday, that's because they probably were. Tommy explained that he felt like this was an act of laziness and plagiarism, and that although John was talented in some departments, the department that he was weak in, being funny, he simply took from someone else who was way funnier. I don't hate John. I know I'm not saying hates John Wade, but this is an incredibly stupid tweet. I had another version of the script. I don't know why that's relevant. But I went back and watched Nick's video again. I thought it was better, so I used it. The two would go at each other on Twitter, but John would eventually apologize, but did not agree with Tommy's criticism at all. After that, there wasn't much to criticize John for. He was on top. His subscriber count was climbing, he was averaging over a million views per video, and things were looking great for him. However, in early 2021, the commentary community would find something worth criticizing John Swan for, and it would change John's career forever. In February of 2021, the man that John had interviewed for his Minecraft documentary would write a Reddit post criticizing John Swan and accuse him of being a delinquent troll. Dream posted on Reddit, this guy's bad news. A while back, after I interviewed with him for a Minecraft documentary, he changed his profile picture and name on Discord to mine and started DMing people pretending to be me. He sent people the N-word and a lot of other stuff, where he would then from his main Twitter vouch that it was me and say that we were amazing friends and link the documentary to prove it. 
Once I confronted him about it, very nicely given the circumstances, he said that his friend had hacked his accounts and done it. I didn't reply to him and unfollowed him, and I don't think he is super fond of me since then. Dream accused John of mimicking Dream's account in order to troll another young creator named Harley TBS on Discord, frequently mentioning the dreaded Minecraft sex mod, as well as saying the N-word. This reaction from Dream was mainly due to John Swan specifically tweeting about him and calling him a douchebag after watching a clip from Moist Critical's podcast. John Swan fired back on Twitter, claiming the accusations were completely false and blamed a much younger family friend that he claimed had access to his Discord account due to John logging into a Discord account at his friend's house. The friend apparently went rogue and started to troll John Swan's mutuals. John claimed that Dream was trying to twist the narrative after John had explained to Dream what had happened. Even Harley TBS, the one who had been trolled by the roguish friend of John Swan, came out in John's defense. I don't believe that John is responsible for anything, okay? I believe that obviously it was probably someone else, seeing how the words were written now and knowing John a lot better. So I don't hold John responsible, but I do hold myself partially responsible for what Dream believes now. However, I do believe the way that Dream has represented it, including cutting a lot of context and trying to turn it into John being unfollowed sort of thing, I feel like that's kind of scummy. Dream responded and criticised John for bringing this to Twitter when Dream's Reddit post did not get that much traction. He also posted the DMs of John explaining himself to Dream. Dream and John would then go back and forth on Twitter. A lot of the commentary community would jump in on this and defend John. However, Keemstar smelled a rat. And now I see the commentary community defending John Swan like John Swan is the victim in the situation. No! Dream is the victim in this situation. Dream's fans were the victim in this situation. And Dream doesn't have an obligation to believe John Tron's story or John Swan's story or whatever you say his fucking name. You're just taking John Swan's side when John Swan can't be the victim. It's impossible for him to be the victim. Dream is the victim in this situation and John Swan is not the victim. End of story. Keemstar would eventually request that John Swan should come on Drama Alert to debate Dream, but John Swan backed out. Dream would do his own Twitch stream on the drama and then would go on Drama Alert with Keemstar, where Dream would give more context to his side of the story and would read the messages between John's alleged family friend and Dream. Interestingly enough, the fake Dream account was now named Nicholas Diorio, which led Dream to believe that Nicholas may have been part of this weird gay op. It doesn't make any sense. The, the dots, they, they, none of them connect. None of them connect to each other. Somehow Nicholas Diorio is is a is account that used to be Dream, and like that's random. It's it's like his best friend. This drama would continue as Nicholas Diorio would do a video defending John on all angles, and John Swan released his own Google Doc defending himself. Behind the scenes, the community was beginning to split on this. You had Tommy C, who was adamant that John Swan was a weaselly little liar, and that was accompanied with Willie Max show, and then you had guys like Augie, Nick, and Optimus, who were confident that there was no reason John would lie about this. However, for John, it would soon all come crashing down. Nicholas Diorio was one of the first to confirm that John had 100% lied, writing this in a Twitter thread and said that he had been shown proof. Nicholas would actually end up recording a call with John Swan that would be later released to the public where John facetiously admitted fault in the situation by declaring, if you know, you know. I'm just asking because I want to know because like I feel like I already know the answer. So it's like really like I, there's no reason to lie to me. If you know the answer, then you know the answer. So you did it. So like I know everything. Like there's no reason to not just tell me. If you know, then you know. That's what I'm uh... going to say. Do you not trust me? It's not that I don't trust you. It's that, um... No, if you know, then you know. That's all I'm gonna say. It's nothing to do with not trusting you, though. That's such a weird answer. I'm just really pissed, so I'll talk to you later. He confessed. John would later make a statement completely apologizing and admitting to lying. This caught people off guard. Everyone saw John as a complete commentary intellectual who was very careful with what he put out and what he said, which is why most people reasoned that John wasn't lying, because why would he possibly risk his entire career just to lie about a dumb troll? He was better off just admitting to it when Dream first came out, and everyone probably would have just laughed it off and John would continue to grow. In fact, more than likely, he'd have either passed or been close to a million subscribers right now if he'd never lied in the first place. 
John's career would never be the same. He'd take time off and come back with videos, but they were not popular and were very mundane topics. He even tried to piggyback off of Turkey Tom, and that didn't work either. He would also occasionally upload videos of him crying about how everything had happened. John, in turn, was made fun of by the commentary channels like Tommy C. He acts like he's the first guy this ever happened to. Like, it's me! It's me! No, I me! Me, me! Me, 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 me! <laughs> There was also one video where he cried about having to move back into his parents' house, which this channel covered back in the day and reacted to. But then the videos just don't do well, and I don't make money, and I'm back where I started. I wish I could just go back to the days where, mm. you know, I didn't have to rely on this, and I didn't have to think about money or think about <laughs> revenue, but unfortunately I, I, I do yeah. have to think about it, and it's yeah. just simple understanding of how it really works. There's a link card if you click up above, you can go watch that stream. As time transitioned, John began to grow a bit more confident within the community. He wasn't back to his peak, but he was beginning to become more respected in the community. However, soon he would find himself in another scandal. One involved a petty Discord drama in which John Swan casted out a community member named High Tree from the Discord. And High Tree told his side of the story, where Tommy would find out that John Swan had a bit of a man crush on Shot from the Points co host Jeff Huffman. This petty drama would die off, however the next one was much more brutal to John's reputation and was similar to the dream altercation. You see, a young girl around 15 named Liz had been talking to an 18 year old named Cammy, and apparently Liz went to John for advice on how to come out with her side of the story against Cammy. This would lead to John and a few others helping Liz to construct a Google Doc in order to expose Cammy. Now at first, John said he didn't have much to do with it, and even went on Destiny's stream to defend himself. Well, I was not involved in the creation of the document. But you didn't say that. My... You just said I wasn't involved. No, no, no. no. Well, if I said that, I was wrong. I was not involved like in the writing of the document. <laughs> that, that's what I meant. However, many would come to find out that he had a huge part in the Google Doc, and again, his reputation would be soured. I mean, right I, guess, I guess it comes up to a difference of opinion, because that sounds like you were involved to me. Maybe you didn't write the initial draft, but you were involved in the creation of the document. It is such a small, minuscule degree. I mean, it, I disagree. It, I respectfully disagree. How? If I came, if they, they sent me like three things you're that are like- You're reviewing this thing and you're it, making changes to the thing. This, they're asking you for your opinion on this thing and you're making changes as you see fit. You were involved in the creation of this document. Now this drama died down and more people would criticize Cammy in hindsight, but John was still considered a liar. Also, a pattern began where everyone who had a call with John Swan was leaking it. And that's an abbreviation of John Swan. If you like what you see, click the like and subscribe button, all that. Leave a comment down below of who you'd like to see next in abbreviated internet history. What? <laughs> that's your response? <laughs>